In this video, I'm going to show you how you can download, install, and run P-Ray for Cinema 4D. So you can see here, I, am, I have downloaded the file. So if you double click on that installation file, you're going to see here that it's going to open up the installer. But if you don't have the correct version of Cinema 4D, you need to download the correct version. In this case, it's going to be the Cinema 4D S24. So you, you can try to look for it in your computer, but if you don't have it, probably it will not detect it. And so you need to install that particular version right there. So all you need to do, if you already download the, the wrong, let's say wrong version, is to go back to the website and download the correct version. So I'm gonna quick the installation here and I will proceed. And you can see this is the correct installation file. So you can see I have previously downloaded the Cinema for the S24 and now I'm launching back the S24, uh, the Blu-ray for Cinema for the S24 version. So just if you don't know where to get the the uh, version of Cinema 4D, just check our, our videos about downloading and installing Cinema 4D, and that's done. So once you have installed V-Ray, Cinema 4D is going to look like any other time, but you will see here a drop-down menu for V-Ray, so you can undock that and you can place it wherever you want. And here you will find all the, the different tools that we are going to explore later. So I'm going to create here a text and I'm going to extrude it with a generator. So first of all, insert the text and I'm going to type here Cine V-Ray for Cinema 4D. Now again, if you don't know how you can use Cinema 4D, you will find a video course in our channel. And here I also want to change the caps and change the parameters here for the size of the caps. and maybe adjust a little bit the size and the, the segments. So we will use this object to test if everything is working fine with the V-Ray. So I'm going to go to create also a plane and this is going to be used for the shadows. So I'm going to extend it and leave it there at the bottom of the text. Now let's get into the render settings here. So this is where you can actually switch your render engine right here in the render section. Change, you don't need standard, you need V-Ray. This is the most important settings you need to do first of all. Start from here. And this is gonna be also useful because we're gonna get to the various panels. This is the common panel, for example. And this is where we can uh, change the most common settings of the render. Also here we can change the engine and the image sampler and other advanced settings, global illumination, which is really important. We're gonna discover all of these later. And well, you can see here there are many panels that can be adjusted and customized. Overrides also is a pretty important panel for cameras for lights, materials, you can override the behavior of these elements in the scene. Interactive rendering, it's about uh, creating, well, the word says it, it's uh, interactive, so we can basically render anything that we do right away. And also we have buckets and progressive, which are the other two methods. So we have three methods of rendering, basically interactive, bucket, and progressive, and we're gonna explore all of that later on. So this is what we can do here. Let's close this and let's check some other really important tools to begin to understand V-Ray. So let's get into the menu and I'm gonna show you here the, uh, well, let's start with the, a production render. So this is the, let's say standard rendering and it's gonna open up the V-Ray frame buffer, which is this window here, where we can find all sorts of tools. And again, we're going to explain this later. You will find here 
well, the, the main area is the render that we are going to create. And here we can also launch the interactive render from here or the production render from here. This other teapot without the play button is the standard. And well, we can do a lot of other things here in post-production and we we're going to see that later. But you can see here, we can launch the production render and interactive render from the V-Ray frame buffer or outside the V-Ray frame buffer. And we're going to use this really often. So we're going to get back many, many times on these first two tools. And that's also the V-Ray frame buffer button where we can open up the panel again and then launch it later, the interactive or the production render. OK, so let's go now to see another tool, which is going to be the render elements. Well, this is something a little bit more advanced. We're going to figure it out that later. And then we have Cosmo Browser, which is to import things, lights, physical camera. You can see here, you can open up additional menus if you click on the, if you hold the left mouse. You can see here we have pro objects and uh, volume grids and environment, which are um, something that we're going to see at the end of the video course. And also we have the conversion of the of the scene, so we can always try to convert materials and uh, elements from other uh, previous versions and other assets. Okay, now let's place a rectangle light. So I'm going to go here to the lights, and that's my rectangle light there in the objects panel. And I'm going to find it in the origin of the scene, just as usual in Cinema 4D. And I move it, and I am going to rotate it. I'm going to point with the arrow directly to my text right there. I'm going to adjust it a little bit, the sides and the rotation. And again, we're going to explain these things also later on. We're going to do a video specific on the lights. But here you can see that you can change the color, the intensity. You can also use the color picker if you want to pick a color inside the screen. And so I'm going to try to get the Cinema 4D color here. And that's going to be my first light. OK, now I'm going to go into the four views and I'm going to manage better that light in the top view so I can move it around and I hold control or command and move it to create a copy and then rotate this in order to be pointed towards my text again. And that's it. So I'm going to move it into better position. And so we have our subject here. We have a couple of lights. We can also adjust, well, use different colors because they're always going to give you that nice tri-dimensional tri look to your scene. I'm going to start an interactive rendering directly from here or a production. Well, let's start with production, actually, which is the standard. So you can see here now it's rendering out my scene. And I can already tell that everything is working fine. Here, again, I can switch to interactive anytime. And we're going to study all these different types of rendering in the course. You can scroll your wheel here to make a zoom inside the V-Rain frame buffer. You can see there is a little bit of noise. That noise there is our first problem that we are going to solve later on when we want to increase the quality of the rendering. So the first issue you will see is that noise. That noise always is generated by a pretty dark scene or any scene where there is not enough lightning or not enough quality of your global illumination. OK, so you can see that the result will be the same either for interactive or the standard rendering. Now, with the interactive rendering, you can see here, well, this is not interactive, so I can move around my lights and my objects in the, inside the scene, and nothing happens in the V-Rain frame buffer, as you can see. So the standard rendering, we can call it static, because it, 
it will not update automatically. So you can see here I'm changing the position of these lights, but nothing happens in the V-Rain frame buffer. This is why I'm using standard render engine. Now, if I switch to interactive, I think this is the best option, especially when you are working your scene and you are deciding what light you want to place in which position and what color and so on. Because what the interactive rendering does is that it's going to show you everything that you're going to need in real time. Let's say real time. It's not actually real time, but pretty fast. Okay, now this is a static render and it is it has been completed. Now I'm going to click here and hide these two panels by clicking and drag it with the left mouse. I'm going to make this smaller so that I can see my V-Rain frame buffer and also I can see my scene and I can update my scene using the interactive rendering. So I'm going to start the interactive rendering. You can start it from the menu, you can start it from the button inside the V-Rain frame buffer. But the bottom line is when that is active, now I can change the position of my light, for example, and this will be automatically and interactively updated inside the VRAM frame buffer. This is why interactive rendering is so useful and so important. You can see there I can move it around. I can rotate. This is gonna show me all the changes that I'm doing. And I can go on and on with this. And again, this is pretty useful because I don't have to relaunch the render every time. For example, I can change here the intensity, find the correct balance of intensity and color of the two lights and do really quick tests and decide which uh, solution looks better and works the best for me. Here I'm changing the position of the plane. I can change also the position of the text and I can go to the other view here and move it upward. So I can definitely, well, this is, I think this is better than before. So you get how the, the importance of uh, using interactive rendering of how this is useful for your work here in V-Ray for Cinema 4D. And of course, this is uh, related, it's connected to the perspective views. So I can move the other views here. I can pan and zoom around, but nothing happens. But look, when I use the, the 3D view, that's going to update the render as well. Now, if you go here in the V-Ray tab, you can also use the GPU instead of the standard uh, hardware, which is going to be your CPU. So you can decide whether to use GPU or, or CPU. Now, this depends on the power of the software. So if you have a stronger GPU, you should use that or you should go to the standard setting, which is the, the PC processors, so the CPU. And well, you can also go here. This is the standard output panel for Cinema 4D when you want to save your rendering. So you can change resolution here. You can make full HD by typing nine, uh, 1000, 920 times 1080 pixels. So this is going to make a bigger render, which, ha which is going to have more quality because it's going to have more pixels, but it's also going to be a little bit heavier and you can save it automatically in the format that you like. If you switch on the save uh, render and you, you, you decide a folder and a name. Otherwise, you can click on that icon. It's going to save the current channel, which means the thing that you are seeing here in the V-Ray frame buffer is going to be saved. And we're going to talk about channels and render elements later. So this is going to be it for this first video. We're going to also explore all the different parts here of the V-Ray uh, tools and well, one thing I would like to say is that V-Wave for Cinema 4D is pretty simple and different. Uh, it's different from SketchUp or Rhino because we have all the objects here in the object panel of Cinema 4D. So we don't need an extra panel that 
usually use in V-Ray for SketchUp or V-Ray for Rhino, where we have a, a V-Ray objects panel. So this will be all for this first video. I hope you enjoyed. Please subscribe to the channel, leave your comments, questions, suggestions for other users. And again, thanks for watching and see you in the next lesson.